通称ラグナロク。That's right, your boy, the king of lightning has caught up. Finally, I have caught up to the record of Ragnarok manga. That is correct, Mundo. I am up to date as of this video's recording, and I do plan on doing the monthly read throughs on the c o r e c u l u m channel on Twitch when the chapters come out for Record of Ragnarok, the latest chapters of Record of Ragnarok. It is. That lovely? Absolutely. And because of Caught Up, I want to give you guys a general quick little video on my stance on what is, what are the best fights from worst to best. What are the best and worst fights of the record of Ragnarok series? And of course, thus far. Now, before getting further, of course, spoiler warning for any. If these people actually exist, for any anime only watchers of Record of Ragnarok. <sighs> really, nigga? I mean, I suppose they exist. I suppose you exist. Like unicorns, maybe. Like Bigfoot, just because just we haven't seen it doesn't mean that doesn't exist. Lizard Men 2, maybe there's some Shang-Chi other dimension, maybe? Maybe. Maybe? Fair enough? So, for the anime only watchers of Record of Ragnarok, spoil the warning ahead. But honest to God, you really should read it. When it comes to the artwork, when it comes to the graphic details, when it comes to the overall pace and flow, it just seems to be a lot, a lot better. Worlds better. Galaxies better. Better, all right? Keep on increasing the parameters here. It just flat out better. I'll keep it a buck. I'll keep it a buck. Now, right now, in the series, in the manga, there are six fights. The first fight was Thor versus Lu Bu. The winner of that fight was Thor. The second fight was Zeus versus Adam, the first man. Winner was Zeus. Third fight, Poseidon versus Kojiro Sasaki. Winner, Kojiro Sasaki, humanity's first fat W. The fourth fight, Hercules versus Jack the Ripper. Winner, Jack the Ripper. Fifth fight, Shiva versus Raiden Tameemon. Winner is Shiva. And then finally, lady, the sixth fight, Buddha versus Bishan Mountain, who was then Zero Fuku, who then was Hajun. And the winner was Buddha, who represented humanity. So, these are the six fights of the record of Ragnarok series thus far. What is the best fight so far in the series? Originally, it was Zeus versus Adam, because that fight was hella dope. That fight was hella well drawn. It was hella epic. I, I, I love that fight. Zeus was epic as all hell. Adam was epic as all hell. The point zero 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 one just repeated. I'm like, no. The things that these guys are doing in that fight was dope as all hell. All right. And and I stand with Adam. All right. I give Adam that salute. Absolutely, I do. Absolutely, I do. All right. Because Adam's my daddy. He's my daddy. My, my boy. So that fight was great. Love that fight. However, the number one fight. Is Hercules versus Jack the Ripper? That it, oh, London Bridge is falling down, falling down. Falling down, London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. That is the best fight in the yo. Calm down. I think that fight has the best artwork I've seen out of all the fights thus far. Number one. Number two has arguably the best flashbacks. You could argue that easily. Hercules was a very good one. And j a c k r a b b had a great one as well, too. No more. That's, for, that's for damn sure. Number three, the fight itself and the philosophy of not only the fight itself, but the opponents and their worldviews was very interesting. 
And then number four, the execution of the tactics used by Jack the Ripper. And then Hercules and using his labors. And then the labors effects on him. But then ultimately speaking, before I even started. So, okay. When, we're, when I talk about the fights of a lot of these things, it's not just the fight itself per se. But it's also outside factors both before and after the fights. And pre and post the Hercules and Jack the Ripper fight, was very good stuff. Seeing how off the heels of the gods' first defeat, seeing the gods' reaction, especially the Greek pantheon. Oh, whoa, the Greek pantheon. They were hella pissed. And when you think about Hercules, when you see how the other gods view him, the hero of the gods, if you would, but of course him formerly being a human being. And then Ares, who is basically calm relief, seeing how serious he was during that whole engagement. Outstanding. Outstanding. Jack the Ripper, our side, evil as all hell, but through his own flashback, seeing humans cheering for Hercules, but Jack the Ripper being shunned by almost everyone, except for like one prostitute that actually knew who Jack was back in the day, knowing Jack's true nature, but yet still pushing forward as a gentleman would. My goodness. So again, I want to keep this more of a vague thing rather than go into every every nook and cranny because if I do that, it'll be like a four minute video. Think, Mark. Because each fight needs a lot of time, I think. In a general sense, there's not a single bad thing, I think, when it comes to the Hercules versus Jack the Ripper fight. And it was the best fight out of all the fights, I'll argue, all right? It's very close. It's, it's really, really close between Jack the Bear Hercules versus Zeus versus Adam. It is, it's really close, but I'm edging it out over. I, I love that fight, without a doubt. Number three, Shiva versus Raiden Tameemon. Yes, I like that fight. Granted, to be fair, Raiden Tameemon, I'm not necessarily too keen on him. I think it was a bit weird when this flashback about how, well, he had this godlike muscle when he was a child, but it, but his body was breaking down as a result of like his own muscle. And then when he did the volume with the Valkyrie, she actually like utilized all of his muscle capacity, that kind of stuff. It, it was kind of weird, honestly, on Raiden's part. But I like Shiva a lot. Oh yeah, I, I hella like Shiva a lot. Shiva was dope. Actually, during that fight, I wanted Shiva to win. I'll be with you. It was a very good fight down to the wire, true men, representative of the sumo of the Hindu gods. And it was, and by the way, that's the reason why I believe, uh, no, that is the reason why this series in the anime is actually banned in India because of Shiva and the Hindu pantheon. So, <laughs> so it's pretty funny of itself. But I did like Shiva a lot. The style of fighting was dope. The combo was very intense. So once again, number three, Shiva versus Raiden Tameemon. I dig that fight a lot. Again, the flashback part for Raiden was meh. I do respect what he did at the end of his flashback for sure, but I still think it's kind of weird. But the Shiva stuff, I like that. That was really good. I thought that was very good. So now number four, so we're now starting the bottom three fights. And these, here's the thing, I will say this, right? None of these fights are, I think, bad fights. They're all pretty epic and pretty dope fights and they're all well drawn and so on and so forth. But among the six, there are winners and losers. And now we get into the losers. Liberation Army style. Liberation. That's right. Number four, Thor versus Lubu. That's right. That's right. Thor versus Lubu, the first fight in the series. Simple, but very effective. And I think we have to pay our respects to that fight in many respects because it is the fight that does set the tone and the mood for the overall series itself. It does. And it does so in a very dope way, where humanity really is not, outside of them not having holy weapons that can damage the gods, they don't lag behind. They really, really don't. And Lubu and Thor was a good case of that. Their flashbacks are truly larger than life flashbacks, with Thor killing all the Jotuns in Asgard that was being guarded by angels. So that was a weird one. Angels guarding Asgard. That, <laughs> very strange. But the Yoans come in there, Attack on Time style, and then Thor handles business. We have Lubu's whole story and how he came to be. And then Lubu learned the Sky Splitter, but he was sad that he could use it against no one. All that stuff was very intriguing. And then the fight itself was actually a pretty fair fight. It was actually a pretty balanced, fair fight. Simple, straightforward, 
two Kenpachi class men going at it. And ultimately, Lu Bu was very satisfied how it went out. He was he himself was very satisfied. And seeing his men, Red Hair and his own soldiers, actually follow suit, all that was good. All that was very, very damn good. And I think it is the top of the bottom three. Number five, Poseidon versus Koji Sasaki. Which means number six, the lowest fight on this right now is Buddha versus Bishan Monten slash Yofuku slash Hajun. Now, let's start there. Why not? Okay. Now, if you saw my reaction on the Cole Requiem channel and on Twitch, you may assume, okay, well, that's because you're salty because they had Jesus in the stands. Oh, hell no. That is crazy. Next is Socrates. Called him a sage. Yes. Did they nerf my boy? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yes. They did nerf my boy. Jesus uh, should be the apex of apexes. Maybe somewhere in the crowd, Muhammad's there too. I don't know. Jafar, don't show any pictures, please. please. That'd be great as all hell. Gracias. But yes, him being a sage, it, it threw off. It threw off a little bit. A little. A little bit. Okay. All right. I'm gonna lie to you. That's like maybe a five percent reason why. The main reason why is because. I was a very oddly structured fight. <laughs> Compared to the other fights, the structure was so odd. It was so random. Because it starts off with Bishan Monten and the Lucky Gods, who wind up fusing into one god that was your Fuku, aka Kid Buu. But Kid Buu is getting absolutely devastated by a Super Saiyan god Goku that was. Buddha. And again, Buddha was epic as all hell. And the flashbacks of Zero Fuku and Buddha, they weren't really that great. Uh, Zero Fuku mainly was like a eh, but they tied together. And then out comes the hype for Beelzebub in a roundabout way through the horns. And then now all of a sudden we have Hajun. I was like, what? Huh? Nani? Like the Hajun thing was weird. It was weird. It was epic, and Buddha winds up beating Hajun, but that was still weird. That was still really... And then the fact that the other gods were cheering for Hajun when Hajun was one of the top class entities of Helheim. I'm like, how do you guys not know that? Like, there were several top end gods that are questioning, was this person actually a god? And for some reason, it didn't dawn on them to stop the fight, because it's supposed to be between gods versus humans, right? Ragnarok. And all of a sudden we have Helheim demonic presences. What? H how? And so we find out how, and it's like, it was a very weird thing, I think. I mean, I guess to be fair, the demons are still divine in their own respects, because it, it, it is Helheim and it is a higher plane of existence than Earth. They didn't know this before, obviously in the chapters, about the whole realms, the three major realms. You have Asgard, where the spirits and the gods are and so on. You have Midgard, the realm of man and so on and so forth. And then you have Helheim, which is essentially like all the hells wrapped into one. But it was still weird as all hell. The structure was odd. And honestly, among the fights, it was the fight that I was the least kind of like engaged with. I'll, be, I'll, I'll keep it a buck. And then finally, finally, number five, the first W that mankind gets, Kojiro Sasaki versus Poseidon. Poseidon was eh. Bro, you're trash, bro. Poseidon, eh. I will show my respects to Kojiro Sasaki, because Kojiro, he gets a very robust flashback. Like he has layers upon layers of flashbacks and outside content that goes for him. He gets layers of that. And of course, cause you know, he's the first Japanese person to fight and he's the foe from God, Nippon, Nippon, Bazai. Of course, so he gets that W. But compared to the other fights, like yeah, even Thor's Lubu, I don't think it was as good. There was too much of a bias being shown 
to Kojiro Sasaki compared to the previous two guys on the human side of thing. And you can kind of see that bias when Kojiro Sasaki is the first one out of the other two to actually initiate himself into the story outside the fight itself. I'm like, wait, what? Like here is Brunhill trying to choose like the next person to fight, Nostradamus, Issei, whatever. Out comes Kojiro Sasaki out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, wait, how come Lu Bu or Adam, they have to come through the gate, but this man Kojiro gets this OD love. I'm like, oh, cause he's, ja cause he's Japanese. So the post fight content was a little bit too, like I would argue, it was a bit too OD for Kojiro Sasaki. I would personally argue that. And then once again, Poseidon was, eh, I would argue among all the deities, even compared to Thor, even compared to Thor, I think he was the blandest of the deities. Honest God. So it was a very well drawn dope fight, don't get me wrong, of course, but not that great compared to the other two fights before it. And then every other fight, but again, Buddha versus Bishan Mountain, who was then Zero Fuku, who was then Hajun. Yeah, that one was really, really strange. So in a general sense, that is my record of Ragnarok ranking for the fights thus far. In the future, I'm gonna do a few videos on the fights individually, breaking down the ins and outs, the goods and the bads, and the philosophies of the fights. At least that's what I plan to do. We'll have to wait and see what the future holds. That, that's what I plan to do, right? We'll have to wait and see. So I'm gonna catch you guys on the flip side. Be easy, take care, stay safe, have a nice one.